Behind me here, you'll see St. George on his charger, his horse, slaying the dragon. I believe St. George is uh, the patron saint of England. Now this dragon here, breathing fire, is a different interpretation. This is our interpretation of the mythical animal, the dragon. I believe in China it has the similar head but more of a snake-like body. But this dragon here has wings, it can fly. Friends of the Slade and this is Maltzell House and I'm here We've got this old battleship here, which is HMS The Victory, the most famous battleship in the world. And it had 100 guns. And when it fired both sides, it made more noise and had more power than all the guns at the Battle of Waterloo. My connection with this ship is my ancestor, Sir Thomas Slade, actually built it and designed it. He built 120 ships of the line. Benjamin Slade. Hello China, William Adlington Moonai. Today I'm with my friend Crystal in her studio in London and uh, Crystal's business is, is called Carfu Photography and behind us here uh, are all these beautiful wedding gowns. Um, Crystal can organise a, a marriage in this country mainly for the Chinese community and uh, she's going to say a few words about her business. Hi, hello, I'm the wedding planner. My company provides the wedding planning and photography service in Europe. If you have an idea, and we are here to make your dream wedding come true. Thank you. And uh, just one last word. In Britain, uh, when the woman um, is getting married, it, uh, we call the girl or the woman the bride, or the man or the, or, or the young man who's getting married the, the groom, the groom. Goodbye. Bye. Hello China. We have an expression in English to pull a rabbit out of a hat. This means to produce an impossible result as if by magic. For instance, you could say, uh, well, I'd, I'd lo uh, my soul came off my shoe and uh, it was a big problem. I needed to find some shoes very quickly and my friend produced these shoes as if, like, pulling a rabbit out of a hat. We have an expression... General Sir John Slade, who was probably the worst general in the British Army, he used to get his troops drunk before battle, and then he used to make long speeches before the battle so that he was late because he didn't like fighting. And he danced with Mary Antoinette, uh, who was the wife of the King of France, and she gave him a snuff box. Also, he became paymaster general of the troops, and he paid the troops or the army at the end of the year, and he got the money at the beginning. And if they died, they didn't get paid. Also, he invested the money at the bank. So he died a very rich man, but he was a very bad soldier. General Sir John Slade. China, William Adlington, Moonai. Um, this is my old car and it's an old Mercedes. In fact, it's a 1990 model uh, 007, which is quite an unusual number plate. It's actually very valuable, that number plate. Um, a plate like that's worth a lot of money, that particular number. Um, and uh, it's about 30 years old. Uh, and so it's not a new car, but some people consider it very smart and chic to have an old car like this, rather than a new car. China, I'm Henrietta Rouse, Lady Henrietta Rouse, and I'm just going to talk about cooking a little. We all rely on it. Um, I love cooking, and these are my favourite. This is like Constance Spry, and she was a very important woman. Her book is like a bible of cooking because it's thorough, and it covers so much ground from baking to cooking. Very refined in its way and very important. Um, a very famous dish called coronation chicken she invented for the Queen's coronation. China, I'm... Hello, my name's Francis Fulford. This is my house, which is called after my name, Great Fulford. And we're now in the Great Hall. The Great Hall 
was the centre of life in a medieval and Tudor house, which where everybody ate together, servants and masters, all together. And the lords and masters would call everybody who was in their house then part of their family. But I describe this room, I look at this room, I describe it rather like a Hollywood actress. The bones are ancient, but the skin is new. If you scrape the makeup off the Hollywood actress, you see the wrinkles and the old thing. And similarly, when we take the, the plaster or the panelling off this wall, we see we can find that behind that fireplace over there, there was an enormous medieval fireplace. Up on the far wall were two great windows, because that was once the end of the house. Hello, my name's... Today, I'm in this garden here, which is in central London. There's an enormous wall around it, so outside you wouldn't know it was here. And it was created as the Chelsea Physic Garden in 1673 by the Worshipful Society of Apocryphers. Um, this garden was basically a place where the, the, the doctors could grow plants with medicinal purposes for, or for use in medicine uh, or the healing arts. So it's continued now and uh, it's, it's semi-private. It means you, in order to come in here you have to know a member. Today I'm in this garden expression in English to weather the storm. This means to get through a crisis. Uh, it usually means a financial crisis. You could say my company had big problems but we managed to cut a lot of expenses and we managed to weather the storm meaning we got through the crisis and now we're liquid again and doing very well. An expression in English to weather the storm. This means to get through a crisis. Uh, you could say my company had big problems, but we managed to cut a lot of expenses and we managed to weather the storm, meaning we got through the Hello China. Um, this is another recipe book I love and get inspired by. Nigella Lawson, How to Eat. And she's very talented. She's a writer, a food writer first of all, so she is very good and clear and, and very thorough in what she explains. Um, I rely on her, her recipes and she uses a lot of interesting combinations of flavours. She's picked up from many different sources. Nigella Lawson. She's on television a lot. Um, now there's Otto Lenghi, who's a hero to Yotam Otto Lenghi who's from the East, from the Lebanon, I believe, and he's a wonderful cook. He's very refined, uh, very pure, and has a very fascinating mixture of Oriental and contemporary um, Otto Lenghi. Um, his restaurants are wonderful, but Patricia says it's better to cook his own wonderful food through his books at home. Hello, China. Um, this is another recipe. I'm Sir Benjamin Slade of Maudsley House, and this is my library. There are no books here because my, my great 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 grandmother stole them all in 1838, so we don't have any books left. However, I have 300 hats which we wear on special occasions. I'm Sir Benjamin Slade. This thing here is what we call a wheelbarrow. wheelbarrow. It's used uh, in this instance in the garden. And on it here, this we call a rake. It's for raking up stones or grass cuttings. Um, so you pick it up like this and push it. This is called a wheelbarrow. This thing here. This little gentleman in the centre is my ancestor, Sir Baldwin Fulford. He fought against the French in the Hundred Years' War. How we wish we were still fighting against the French. Um, but then at the end of that, he went to the east, he killed an enormous Saracen um, in single combat um, for the honour and liberty of a royal lady locked up in a castle. Um, and then he came back and fought in our great wars of the roses. He ended up with a sticky end, hung, drawn and quartered at Bristol. 
So, not a nice way to finish your life. But he was over 60, and he probably thought he'd had quite a good innings for his time. This little gentleman in the... This particular object we call a jug, a jug, um, it's for carrying liquids. You could put water, wine, orange juice in it. And this particular jug we call a cut glass jug because the glass has been cut with either a diamond or carborundum wheel into the glass to make this pattern and effect. This is what we call a cut glass jug. This particular... I'm Sir Benjamin Slade and this is Mortal House, which is now virtually a hotel in some ways. So we have guests from all around the world who come and stay here and I have to entertain them. This is the King's Room. We have a bed here, which is eight and a half feet wide and we can get seven people in it. And this is where the bride and bridegroom all stay, or very important people who come, dukes and royalty, stay in this bed. And this is one of our bedrooms, it's the Monmouth room, and people who come and stay rent this bedroom. And this is the drawing room at Maltzell House in Somerset. mother where I was brought in an, up in an inland village park and my mother was always at the stove. She was the most wonderful cook. She could throw off homemade bread in a few minutes it seemed and, and she could cook for dozens of people around Christmas. She'd be up all night and she'd produce a massive Christmas lunch and then tea for 16 people. I never knew how she had the energy but she did and the efficiency and I used to help her a lot so I loved cooking with her being occasionally like a sous chef and I picked up I think my love of cooking. Most of my family are good cooks, my aunts and my, um, my Brett and siblings um, so it must run in the genes. Mother, where I was brought in we're in what we call the ballroom, but a hundred years ago they called it the great dining room or the great drawing room. Uh, it's a double queue. In the 17th century, everybody was absolutely mad keen on mathematics and considered the key to beauty was in math, in getting proportions right. And they were right, of course. And, and this is a double queue room which they thought was the perfect proportions. And it's a marvellous room. It was their grand room, their showing off room. Here we've got a great battle picture on the wall at the end. It's actually a, a picture of they call the Battle of Newport between the uh, Dutch with a big English contingent, possibly an ancestor among them, um, fighting the Spanish. Uh, the religious wars which engulfed Europe between uh, 1530 to about 1640, for nearly for over a hundred years. We're in what we call... This porcelain bird is what we call a swan, a swan. We have an expression in English, swanning around, which means when someone's wandering around aimlessly without doing anything. You could say, look, those people out there, they're just swanning around. They're not doing any work. They're not getting anything done. They're swanning around. This port Standing by the river in central London, Chelsea, and behind me is uh, quite a famous bridge. It's quite old, probably um, a couple of hundred years old now. And uh, it's what we call, in English, a suspension bridge, suspension because the weight of the bridge is taken by, it's suspended on cables. So that takes the weight of the bridge. So we call this particular style of bridge a suspension bridge. A lot of people come here to photograph it or paint it. It's very popular. Standing by the river in central London, Chelsea. Hello, China. Standing by the river in central London, Chelsea, and behind me, is uh, quite a famous bridge. It's quite old, probably um, a couple of hundred years old now. And uh, it's what we call, in English, a suspension bridge. Suspension. Because the weight of the bridge is taken by, it's suspended on cables. So that takes the weight of the bridge. So we call this particular style of bridge a suspension bridge. A lot of people come here to... 